Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another resin project. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make these adorable, see if I can get it to hang properly, branch necklaces. So they're these little tiny silicone molded, then resin made. They're resin, it's a silicone mold branches. So I made one clear with a little cherry blossom pattern and I made one rose gold glitter. You can use them for anything, um, decor, um, bigger projects, they work great for backgrounds, or I drilled some holes and I made them into a necklace because I wanted to wear one with my little acorn. This is a little UV resin acorn that I made. I'll link that project down below, but I wanted to wear them together. So we are going to get started on making these. This is a fun, quick and easy UV resin project. So if you haven't quite delved into UV resin. Haven't quite delved into UV resin yet. This is a fun beginner level project. Let's do it. All right, y'all. So we are going to take a little bit of UV resin to make our branch, and I want this to be rose gold glittered. So I'm just going to add a bit of my UV resin into my measuring cup here with my glitter and mix that up. And if we need more, we'll add more. Now, UV resin doesn't typically like to be mixed super deep, but as long as, oh, using the wrong hand, as long as you are using a clear mold that the UV light can get all the way through, it does work. We still will probably do this in at least two layers so we can make sure it cures in the middle. Have too much glitter for our resin. And of course I do have my safety equipment, my respirator and my glove on. Technically I should have two gloves on, but I'm running low on gloves. So Right, that's a better consistency. You want the resin to still be able to move and flow like resin. If it's too gloopy, you have too much glitter and not enough resin. All right, so let's see how far this gets us. Go ahead and start. And if push comes to shove, we will use our popsicle stick to help guide it, but you can usually pinch this pretty good, so. Just gonna pour it in. Let it start to level out. And like I said, we really don't wanna fill it all the way full with this first layer. Call that for a second. Now resin, once it starts to flow in a direction, will self-level, but you do have to Make sure it gets into all the areas. So just use a popsicle stick or a toothpaste. Make sure it's in every little cavity of your mold. All right. That's pretty good. It's not quite in the end there. Perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to move this out of the picture and I'm going to cure our little branch for round one. And the little, my little light at least lasts for about 30 seconds. I just let it go the full amount of time. It will really start to set up and harden after about five, 10 seconds, but I just always feel better if it's, goes the full time. Don't know why. This is how my brain works. There we go. All right. So now that first layer should be cured. Let me go ahead and add a second layer.
right. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this in three steps because that first layer was pretty thin. And again, I just want to make sure that there's nothing in the middle of this that is not cured. This might be overkill, but I recently did a bunch of little tiny resin UV acorns and they cured perfectly on the outside, but I sanded a few of them down and there was still a little bit of uncured resin on the very middle. If you weren't sanding them to make them rounder or fit acorn caps, you would never have that problem because the outside is perfectly hard, but I am going to have to drill through this to add hooks for my necklace pieces. So I want it to be 100% cured all the way through. Last dose. We'll see if we have enough. We're kind of running really low. But if I can get away with not mixing more, that would be ideal. I know if I mix more, I'll have too much. Don't worry, I ordered more gloves. I go through a lot of them with all the projects I make. That's pretty good. Just a little bit more if I can get it. Right here. Just add a little dot where it's low that will fill in and mix with what's there. All right, we're gonna call that good. Once it's cured and done, we can always sand the back smooth if it's a little lumpy. All right, so let's go ahead and unmold this and then I typically like to cure it from the other side, but seems good. See if it went all the way through. Whoop, doop, doop. 
Okay, so we definitely need a little bit of sanding on the back, but other than that, he looks great. I'm gonna get my little sanding guy out, and I think honestly, that's just because we this, this is so gloopy. Like if we hadn't used glitter resin, I think it would have been fine. So I am actually going to do a regular clear you one as well because I have some pretty um cherry blossom ish like. I don't even know. It, it came on a package, and I just thought, man, that'd be pretty at the back of this branch. So we're going to just do clear on, on one and see how that looks. Crevices. All right. Is one complete? All right. Yep. Cured. All right, that looks pretty even across the top. Of course, with the squeeze bottle, I can make sure that it's not spilling up and over, which is nice. Of course, you can use a little syringe. Instead of dabbing with it, I could have used this to add my UV resin into the piece. So, you know. I think that's good. And I'm going to go ahead and cure it. All right. So, definitely went a little outside the lines on that last bit. That's okay. Let's see if we can't clean these up a smidge. Got scissors. I need them. I have an exacto knife and sand sandpaper, but typically scissors will cut these off. All right. Perfect. This one might be harder. Still learning to be good with small molds. I 
I'm used to pouring resin on much bigger scales. Definitely cures fast though. That's nice. And that's the whole reason I'm using it because I could have poured this with regular one to one maker poxy. But then I'd have to wait until tomorrow to unmold it. Ooh. Okay, be careful. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so perfect. We got two branches. Now here's the question. Here's my little package that I want to use that has these beautiful cherry blossoms. Now you can print a design like a cherry blossom on a acetate. can save packaging like I do. You could paint cherry blossoms on the back of your design if you're really cool. I think those are cured. There's all kinds of different ways to get the same kind of look. But I just thought this package was so pretty when I bought this last week. This was literally just a <laughs> stone that I wanted. Ooh. Bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. I think I'm gonna try to use this section right here. Let's see. But if you really want really wanted this exact packaging you could go get it but I am not sure that that's even going to be visible because this is kind of an opaque look so I think we're just going to leave these how they are but ideally if, if you wanted to you could probably add a top coat to this but you just cut out the backing and then use UV resin to glue it on now, the only other thing I could do is turn it around and wear the branch this way. That might work. I don't know. Let me cut this baby down and see what I think. Okay, so I've got it cut down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue one side. That way it doesn't move out of place. And then I'll do the other side. So I'm going to add just a little bit of resin on this. And then I'm going to use the edge of my finger to kind of glue it on. Put some resin underneath it. Make sure it's in place. And now hit it with the UV. Yeah, I can't lift it up anymore, so it's working. Just don't get your fingers close to that UV without a second glove. Those gloves are going to show up, like, tomorrow. Yeah, it's working. It's gluing down, so just don't get your, your fingers close to the UV. Those gloves are going to show up, like, tomorrow morning, I swear. This is the problem of living in the middle of nowhere is running to just grab some gloves is half the time it's faster just to wait for Amazon. All right, that is cured. Let's do the other half. I'm just gonna 
poke this kind of everywhere, including underneath. All right. Then we'll be done. Won't need these gloves anymore. Half a glove. All right, all done. So now we could wear it this way or we could wear it this way, this way. It just looks kind of like pink blobs. So I don't know, I like it both ways. I actually, like, I wasn't even sure about this one. I thought this one was gonna just be my test run. I think I like it better. So I'm gonna go add some holes for some little jewelry jump rings, and then I will show you the finished shots. Thought my hand was sticky, but it was all in my brain. All right, y'all. They turned out so pretty. I love this one. I literally made this one as a test piece because I had some leftover rose gold UV resin from my uh, my truck of acorns. If you want to see how to make these, I will link that below. But I love it, and I've been wearing it stacked with my little acorn necklace that I made. This one did turn out really cute, but like I was showing you in the video, I just don't like the cherry blossoms as much as I thought I would, um, mainly because I wanted it to show through to this side where the texture is and they just don't. So if this mold was clearer and didn't have this texture, it'd be great. Um, I'm doing some little dog bones with names on the back in the same kind of idea and it works perfectly. So I will link to that below as well. There are gonna be Christmas ornaments but this is still cute. I liked it. I wanted to wear these stacked. That's why I made the pink one a necklace, but you know, these still work. So I hope you guys liked this video. I will show you real quick. I just used a little hand jewelry um, drill to make holes and then added jump rings and chains for these. It is super easy to drill through resin, just took a couple of minutes. And then I was able to add the jump rings. You can use an electric drill, but you need a very small drill bit and it can get a little hard to control. So I'll link to this below. It's, it's something that's nice to have if you're ever going to do any kind of jewelry or small resin pieces that you need to add holes to. So I will see y'all in the next video. Bye. Also, these chains and jump rings and the lobster clasps are nothing fancy. I just grabbed a kit off of Amazon for jewelry making. Um, obviously, I could add nice chains to these if I wanted them to be really nice. But for me, these are just fun fall pieces that I'm going to wear a couple times a year. I don't need them to be super duper high quality. Um, for the chains. I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on them. So I will link to that as well. I wore these to Home Depot yesterday. They held up fine. So see y'all later.